Welcome Pokemon trainers, Pokemon breeders, and Pokemon masters alike. It's your host of the most griever as always, bringing you guys some more Digimon content. That's right, digital monsters content. I think everybody's going to be disappointed when I say that we are playing Pokemon Gen Lock Challenge. For those of you who don't know what a Gen Lock is, I'm sure you've all by now heard of what a Nuzlocke is. If you haven't, quick Google search will explain it, but pretty much it's hard mode for Pokemon veterans. Now, what is a Gen Lock necessarily? Well, here or here, I'm not sure exactly where. Camera's mirrored, so never know where I'm putting my text bubbles. But uh, I'll have a quick description of what is a Generation Lock Challenge, a variant of the Nuzlocke Challenge. Pretty much, in layman's terms, it's very easy to explain. You do all the core generation games in chronological order, and you play them in a Nuzlocke style. But, the key thing is, at the end, assuming you win, let's say, your first Nuzlocke run, you take that championship team, you put them into the next run, and those are the Pokemon then you continue to use in the subsequent game. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? Well, it sounds pretty difficult when you consider that uh, people lose Nuzlocke all the time. I've lost them on this channel. So, trying to defeat and win a Gen Lock means that, uh, depending on what your stopping point is, whether it's Gen 6, 7, 8, it, it depends on yours. This particular one, I believe I'm going to stop at Gen 6, assuming we get that far. Uh, you need to basically win six Nuzlocke's in a row. That sounds a little more challenging. So it's sort of the super challenge, if you will, version of a Nuzlocke challenge. So what we're, of course, starting with is going to be red version, but you can pick any uh, version you want. Pretty much, uh, I've even heard people switching around the generations for their own preferences. I'm sure people can do that if they want to. Uh, so from what I understand is that you pick, so the first generation of game of course is red, blue, yellow, you know, in that regard. You can pick any of the three. You start that, you play it like you would a regular Nuzlocke, or in our case, a special Nuzlocke or extra hard Nuzlocke. The extra rules are of course in the description box in every one of my Nuzlocke videos, including this one. So you can check that out if you're wondering why I did a, B, C, why I didn't heal here, why I didn't use an item there. You can see why I'm playing on uh, my own rules as far as the Nuzlocke challenge goes. I follow all regular Nuzlocke rules, but I add my own rules in to make it a little more challenging for myself. And I lose more often than I win, so it's clearly a challenge for me. Uh, but as a result of this, you pick any single one, so red, blue, yellow, in this case I picked red, and then assuming you win, then you get to pick gold, silver, crystal, and so on and so forth. Pretty much. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. What I'm going to be doing here with these particular videos, however, is I've already recorded uh, a lot of gameplay and stuff, and I've made some highlights. I've simply highlighted all the major points, beating uh, the rival, the gym leader, uh, that kind of idea. I, I've already made similar videos to this, so what I decided to highlight was pretty much any... Uh, major uh, Pokemon catches, uh, all the rival battles, all the gym and gym battles, uh, Team Rocket and the Elite Four, of course. So I've made basically a highlight reel of the entire run, so anything significant will pop up here. And we're just going to be going through it. I'm going to basically be giving uh, commentary going forward. Now, uh, outside of that, however, there is a little bit extra going forward with the Gen Lock Challenge. It doesn't just go, all right, you get your next uh, set of Pokemon and then you continue the game. No, there is a bonus uh, that I read about that uh, works out pretty well and I've decided to implement it into this particular run of the game. So let's check that out. So the Gen Lock, it sounds pretty challenging already, does it not, you know? And you're sort of thinking to yourself, why would anybody put themselves through these paces? Well, other than the bragging rights and the challenge, I also like the idea of a reward system. Now, I'm gonna not claim that I invented this reward system. I feel like I found this on Reddit when I was looking through different Nuzlocke challenges and different variants of how to play Nuzlocke and just adding different ways on how to play the game. And I really liked this version of it. Pretty much, when you play a Genlock, and assuming that you win your first run, and I'm gonna post the text over here to basically summarize what I'm about to talk about, is you get a point-based system. Pretty much, 
if you win your first run or your second run, what have you, you gain one point. And that point can be spent on the next, of course, Pokemon for an egg move, a nature, an IV stat, a shininess, whatever, whatever you want. You can uh, spend it on something special for your Hall of Famer. Hall of Fame, championship Pokemon, whether reincarnated within an egg, what have you, in the next run at level 5, should gain a little bit of a bonus, a little bit of uh, extra for being a, a champion from the last run, right? So the idea is, is that your championship Pokemon deserve a little bit of a bonus or a boost, if you will, uh, for surviving the one run, two runs, three runs, etc. And in addition to that, if you do a clean sweep, if you manage to beat the Elite Four and the champion without losing a single Pokemon, not the whole run, just the Elite Four from start to finish, then you get an additional two bonus points on par my rules. Uh, uh, apparently, in the original version of this variant, it was only one bonus point, but I'm giving myself two because I, of course, uh, with my additional rules that you can check in the description box down below, I feel like two additional bonus points for doing what I do uh, sort of lends to it because most people can buy 20 full restores at the Elite Four. I can't. So my way is a little more difficult to do things, so I'm awarding myself an extra two bonus points if I manage to do an entire clean sweep of the Elite Four and Champion without losing a single Pokemon. And these, once again, these points at the beginning of the next run or the next game can be spent on all three, can be spent on one Pokemon. You can deviate them up. You can do egg moves, natures, IVs, whatever, whatever suits your fancy sort of idea, right? So uh, I hope that explains everything going forward. And once again, we're gonna start the highlight reel right now of my red start to the genlock. I chose red version because I've already done yellow and blue on this channel, so I decided why not make it the triple threat and finally do all three original gen games uh, on this channel. So we're starting with red version. Let's get right into it now. Our first run at the genlock. Let's see how we do. All right, so here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are starting the red nuzlocke of the genlock edition. So uh, as I've already explained about the genlock and everything already, uh, we're going to start with red version only for the sole purpose that uh, we've already done blue version Nuzlocke on this channel along with the original yellow version from the previous channel which was re-uploaded on, of course, this channel. So, I believe we're all good. Once again, this is a highlight reel of the original uh, run. So, we're just going to be going through and commentating as we go. So, of course, we start a new game. It's Professor Oak and all that fun jazz. Now, as we go through this, uh, we're going to be going in chronological order, of course, of the Genlock challenge and stuff. If I recall correctly, uh, I think we don't do as well as I wanted to on this particular run. Uh, so there is that, it's just a fair warning. But uh, we're going to wait and see. We're going to wait and see. Maybe some of my blunders weren't exactly recorded on this one. I, I've been uh, working on this for a while now. And uh, this footage is about uh, two, three months old while edited. So uh, I'm sort of watching it again for the first time. Uh, and I believe, yeah, so since I'm, you know, Griever, uh, I call the, uh, instead of like butt face or something like everyone else does, uh, I call the rival uh, Cypher from Final Fantasy VIII. You know, that kind of idea. And uh, here we go. So we start the game. And we, of course, base our... And all the Nuzlocke rules, of course, once again, are in the description box down below. We're not playing a standard Nuzlocke. We're playing an additional hard mode Nuzlocke that I've invented myself. My own variant, if it were. And uh, all the extra rules are, of course, in the description box. But uh, there's no bot items other than Pokeballs in uh, any Pokemart and etc. Evolution Stones are an exception, that kind of idea. So here we go and we are ID card. We also, one of the rules, uh, that's why I brought it up, is that you pick the uh, starter Pokemon based on your ID number, meaning that uh, one to three is a Bulbasaur, four to six is a Charmander, and uh, seven to nine is a Squirtle with zero being your choice. 
So we uh, decide to, well, of course, we get Charmander in the end, and we call him Acnal, uh, sorry, <laughs> and Caligon. And, and Caligon is, of course, and Caligon the Black is the name of the one of the greatest dragons in fantasy uh, from Lord of the Rings. So, and Caligon. So here we go. Our first rival battle. Let's make it count with and Caligon the Black. I felt like we needed to name our first Pokemon after a real hard hitter, and Caligon. Now, I, actually, uh, with Tolkien's way of, of uh, pronunciation, uh, which uh, of course I agree with, he's the linguist, not me, I'm not sure that uh, myself or other YouTubers are pronouncing and Caligon correctly. Uh, it could be and Caligon, it could be and Caligon. Uh, there's many pronunciations as far as I know. Uh, I just go with Ancaligon. Uh, because that's the one I've heard the most often. And given the fact that it's, uh, Caliborn and Calabrina and that kind of idea, uh, I believe the C is supposed to be a hard K in a lot of Tolkien's writings. So, anyways, we win that, uh, battle fairly easily as, you know, we do. A lot of people discount, uh, of course, that first rival battle if you lose and they say you can continue again. I just usually restart the whole run if I lose the rival battle. So our first encounter is actually a rat's attack and uh, we scratch attack him, get him down to about, you know, uh, what's that? 30% health or something like that. We throw our first set of Pokeballs at him, of course. Now, Route 1 didn't count in this run. Uh, a lot of people don't count it until you get Pokeballs. I don't do that rule. Um, so there is that. And we name uh, Ratatat, I believe, uh, Ratagon from, uh, or Ratagon from uh, the Great Mouse Detective. Just because he will eventually become, of course, a grand Raticate and will resemble that Ratagon. And our next encounter is, of course, a Pidgey. Not really much options as far as I know uh, in the grass here. And Caligon, of course, is easily taking this without issue. Another Pokeball. Boom, we're gonna catch ourselves a Pidgey, I'm pretty sure. Boom, no big problem there, right? So, there we go. We cut ourselves a Pidgey for the first time. Now, what do we name this Pidgey? I'm not sure. Do we just go for the quick and easy rock? Or do we go for something... No, we're going for rock. Rock's an easy, it's an easy uh, name. And uh, here in Viridian Forest, we actually get the very rare Pikachu encounter at level three. Uh, actually, it's funny, in yellow version, you can catch a level nine Pidgeotto, which I happened to do in my first encounter uh, when I played the yellow version for the first time. Not realizing how rare it was, I believe I killed it. Uh, the first time I played the yellow version, but we did manage to catch uh, a Pikachu. Uh, so we got a Pikachu from Viridian Forest, which of course you can't get in the yellow version, so this was kind of new to me. Uh, we end up naming uh, Pikachu Copper, uh, you know, because copper wire uh, is the best conductor. Well, gold is actually a better conductor. There's a lot of better metals, but the most... Uh, universally accepted a lot of people use what's called new all or aluminum wiring it's it's shit <laughs> use copper so i'm naming my electric type as an electrician i'm naming it after the the metal that i trust which is good solid copper wiring um i'm old-fashioned like that and now here's our second rival battle and we're gonna throw our copper pikachu who's already we uh raised up uh, still, with only one Thundershock, still cannot kill a Pidgey, even though it's super effective with a Thundershock. Very uh, interesting there. Uh, and now we're, of course, up against a Squirtle, which this is excellent, actually. Uh, so, two hit KOs for the Squirtle and the Pidgey with Copper. Uh, good that we have an Electric-type this early on, because I don't know when... 
I think it's not until after Cerulean we have our opportunity to have our first Electric type of Voltorb or Magnemite or something like that. So, uh, either way, we beat our rival soundly, and there's no issues uh, going forward from that. And now we continue on, and now we're in Pewter City, and we're in our first gym battle. Now, of course, in I believe in my rules, you battle all gym trainers, or you don't have to. But it's good for training experience, so I, I, I don't think I set a rule. I think I just set a rule once you once you enter a gym, you can't leave. Once you enter a gym, you cannot leave. Uh, so we're up against the trainer. We use Rat again and uh, easy hyper fanging the entire team because we are at a severe disadvantage against Brock and the Geodudes. And the, of course, the Onyx. So we're sending out Rat again first. Trying to get an easy victory without any damage, so we don't need to use a potion. And we only take seven, 7 health damage. So, there we go. And I do not set a level cap, by the way, guys. I try to be relatively, you know, as you guys can tell, level 14s and 13s. So, I'm not above, actually, uh, Brock's Onyx. But I do try to be relative, though I don't, I don't dismiss, like, if I had one level 15. Sorry, I'm using it, you know. So here we go. Our first gym battle in the red Nuzlocke Genlock challenge. And we're up against the level 12 Geodude. We start off with Rock. And yeah. Alright, my strategy, of course, is to lower the accuracy of the Geodude so we can do some easy damage. Because the defense girl is going to happen, of course. But, we do have... And yeah, quick attack's not going to do much of anything. So we're going to uh, continue to attack. Just to see what he's going to do. He's going to continue to use defense curl. But remember, we're waiting in the wings here for Ember. I believe our Charmander, of course, probably has Ember. And we're waiting on our special. That's our main thing here. So using sand attack... And trying to do as much damage as possible after a couple of sand attacks here. Uh, with Rock is Rock's main staple as far as I'm concerned. There's probably better strategies. Nuzlockers are probably looking at me going, Oh man, you have so much better opportunities here to do other things. And I'm like, yeah, probably I do. I'm sure I do. But uh, this strategy, I believe, works for me. Because, well, the video's not over yet, guys. So I'm pretty sure I win. Um... But let's see. So uh, one tackle finally gets through, and I go for another sand attack. So that's, I believe, three three or four. Uh, then we go back to our quick attacks. I believe that's three. And, yeah. So doing quite a bit of damage. Now, at this point, I jump into... Ac uh, I jump into Encalagon. And this is where I was talking about. Use Ember. Now, it's still not very effective, but Defense Curl isn't going to matter anything against him. And I was hoping with the Sand Attacks that I wouldn't take any damage. I did, of course. But, and Caligon doesn't care because, boom, a few Embers, all those misses, boom. Now, here comes the Onyx, level 14. This is where I sort of think about it for a minute and I thought, you know what, what if I got a burn on this guy? And I take the tackle. It's a critical hit, but honestly, a critical hit doesn't do as much as I would, would be afraid of. So I'm trying to go here for the burn, and it still doesn't happen. The tackle does plenty. I go for a growl just to lower the uh, lower Onyx's attack. Now, the screech seems like, oh, well, that didn't matter. It will once I switch out, because now his attack is still lowered, Screech isn't going to matter to now switching out to Pidgey, of course. But he goes for another Screech. This is where I go for a Sand Attack regardless. Uh, he goes for another Screech. It misses. A Tackle misses. Two Sand Attacks. Now I'm going for a third one. Screech misses again. There's three Sand Attacks. Now I jump into Ratigan. And Ratigan... Uh, okay, so... Onyx goes for Bide here. Now, of course, what do you think I'm going to do? Easy peasy. You go for the Tail Whip. Lower that defense by two stages. We're going to be doing a lot of damage here. So, Hyper Fang. Ooh, yeah. That's doing way better than it ever would have before. 
with all those sand attacks, this is this is over. This is over. It's just there's nothing he can do. Boom! Radigan wins the day, defeating Onyx with ease. We receive our first gym badge. It's all good. Now, we receive, of course, the TM for Bide. I don't believe we ever actually teach Bide to anybody. It is a good move against the AI when you think about it, if strategized correctly. But, yeah, I never use it. So, um, but yeah. And now, alongside of, uh, that was a little glitchy, but alongside uh, going towards Mount Moon, and Caligon evolves into a Charmeleon. Charmeleon, so we get ourselves a Charmeleon. And now here's our next encounter, which is a Spearow. Kind of unfortunate, really, when I was hoping for a Nidoran. I love Nidorans, both female and male, I don't care. Nidoqueen, Queen, Nidoking, King, they're, they're solid Pokemon throughout the entire franchise. They're never bad, so. I was sort of hoping for that. I, I think he can catch them in this grass. I'm not sure. Either way, we threw a Pokeball. We got ourselves a Spearow. Uh, and uh, what do we name our Spearow? The only reason I'm disappointed with Spearow is that, for one thing, in this game, uh, the flying Pokemon don't get a whole lot of love. And uh, what do we name him? Oh, Falco. Yeah, we named him Falco after uh, Star Fox. And uh, now we're in Mount Moon. And boom, we get a Z go figure, a Zubat, of all things. We get ourselves a Zubat. Uh, do we manage to catch this one, or do we fail to catch this one? Oh no, we, we didn't kill it. Fantastic, fantastic. And here we go, Pokeball, go! And we caught ourselves a Zubat. Fantastic. And what do we nickname this Zubat? Bruce Wayne? Batman? Something along those lines. Oh right, Grayson, as in Dick Grayson. That's that's what we name him. Yep. Pretty cool, pretty cool. I'm good with that. Dick Grayson. Yep, I'm good with it. Now here's where Rock decides to evolve, of course, into Pidgeotto. Once again. I mean, you gotta remember, guys, I grew up with the anime, so Pidgeotto is sort of my guy. Uh, this is where we got through Mount Moon and all that stuff. Now we're uh, doing the Cerulean Bridge, or the Nugget Bridge, as it were, and it's our third rival battle up against Gary, or Blue, Green, whomever, in this case, Cypher. Now, Pidgeotto level 18 versus our Copper at level 18. Boom, everybody seemingly survived. That quick attack does a lot of goddamn damage. Holy crap. And even with a critical hit, our Pikachu is not exactly the strongest uh, that you wanted. I go for a quick attack here thinking that I can outspeed it, which I do, but I thought I could go for the kill. The problem is, is that it doesn't matter and we still take the damage. Um, I was just trying to win it out. Now in this particular instance, I know that Abra has nothing. There's no hidden power back then, it's all teleport, you know, there's no uh, teaching Abra anything, so we just go for attack, quick attack, and look at that damage. So, once again, going for another quick attack instead of a Thundershock, the special, uh, obviously, winning out. So, Copper uh, just, uh, defeats two. Uh, who do we go into here? We go into, against the Ratatat level 15, who of course will have uh, Hyper Fang, and we get a critical hit, unfortunately, from a quick attack. Boom, two quick attacks, and we only get off one Hyper Fang. It's enough, though, however, uh, but Radigan is now at only 16 HP, so we're definitely gonna have to switch. This battle actually did not really go in our favor. I made some poor decisions. We go into our newly evolved Pidgeotto to tank uh, the Squirtle's attack, and then we start going for quick attacks. Now, in this particular instance, the tail whips and stuff aren't gonna matter much because we have the defense 
and the uh, the attack power on our side. It's not a war turtle yet, so it can't really dish out a whole lot of damage. And we're gonna be able to very easily uh, defeat this Squirtle, uh, even and finally starts going for water guns, but it's a little too little too late. And boom, we defeat our rival. Now I believe, I don't know if we show anything on the Nugget Bridge other than the capture of a new Pokemon, unless we lost somebody. So, let's see. So Cypher walks away, our rival walks away, and then boom. Oh, right. So here's our newest addition, which is a Kakuna of all things. Now, I don't believe we ever add the Beedrill to the lineup. Um, we use Grayson and we go for... Super Sun, why would we do that? Oh, I think I'm gonna kill it, which I probably would. So I'm going for the Super Sun, trying to make it hit itself. And the hardens just keep coming. Okay, finally hit it with the supersonic. But it gets the harden anyways. I think this is where I finally go for the bite. There we go. So I, I guess I was really worried for nothing because it went for plenty of hardens. Uh, by the looks of it, I probably could have, after one harden, probably could have attacked it and not killed it in one hit. Uh, so at this point, I go for a Pokeball. And I believe we catch the Kakuna. Oh, no, we don't. So I go for another bite. We got it down, maybe not red, but, you know, you guys can see the damage there. And that's two Pokeballs wasted on a goddamn Kakuna. I'm getting a little irritated, you know what I'm saying? So I switch out into Copper at this point and let him use his Harden. I'm going for the Thunder Wave. Just for the ease of trying to get this thing to get in the damn ball. And still, nothing. And I'm like, I've wasted three Pokeballs. And you gotta remember, guys, if you check my rules, I'm only allowed five Pokeballs. Other than found Pokeballs, I'm only allowed five per the best uh, that I can find per area. So at this point, I'm getting a little like, listen, I haven't used that many, but I'm not going to waste like 15 on you. And boom, we do end up eventually catching, of course, the Kakuna. But the f sad thing is we wasted like five Pokeballs on him and never used, though he has the best name. For those of you who've watched Beast Wars back in the day, Wazbinator. I sort of wanted to use him just on the name alone, Wazbinator. It would have been so cool to have a Beedrill go through this entire Genlock challenge. Next up on our to-do list is an Oddish. So. Leech Life in the Oddish works out very, very well for us. Of course, even though Leech Life was shitty back then, it still worked against Grass types, that's for sure. So, got him right down to the red. Uses, uses an Absorb, and here's where I believe we, we catch the Oddish, don't we? Because I believe I also show some failures. Like, I show, if I lose a Pokemon, I'm pretty sure I show all the highlights of losing any Pokemon that I lose, plus Pokemon that I failed to catch that I wanted. Uh, I don't think I failed to show, I, I don't show every single encounter because some encounters is like, oh, it's it's a double because I don't allow doubles. So like if I run into another Pikachu or a Pidgey or something, I don't show that. I just, yeah, no, we didn't get anything on that route. And we move on, right? So we call uh, the Oddish the Mary Jane. I think you guys know why. And boom, Rattigan is about to evolve into Raticate. Who looks so cool in the senses. Yeah. And now we've entered officially the Cerulean City Gym, our second gym. Let's go. For future installments, I don't know if I'm gonna show every trainer battle. I'm not 100% sure. But since I don't really show any, outside of that, I don't really show any other battles. So I feel like this is, outside of Gym Leaders, the Elite Four, and the Rival, you 
you guys basically, unless I lose something or something like really scary, you guys don't end up seeing any of the actual trainer battles or anything like that, any close calls, that kind of idea. Uh, so that's why I sort of show the entire, from start to finish, since once you enter the gym, you can't leave as part of my rule set. I like to show the entire gym challenge all in one take. So, uh, so yeah, as you can tell, we took some damage from the horsey. Uh, we're starting off with Rock here, level 20. Raised him up a little bit, clearly. Uh, up against the Shelter. We're trying to save Pikachu, clearly. We can't really use Charmeleon in this case, so we're really uh, trying to attack with our neutral Pokemon right now. And obviously we still have Mary Jane there, but Mary Jane is only level 14. So now we go, thankfully there's only two trainers actually in here. I believe in later installments there's three, but for right now in Cerulean there's only two trainers we have to defeat, and this one only has one, which is a Goldeen. And the Goldeen's pretty easy because it's level 19, though our Raticate's level 20, so we just go straight for the Hyper Fang. I think we, yeah, two hit. No problem. And we go for a quick attack there, just... Yeah, okay. We we do it. I think I was playing on the safe side there, because once again, quick attack has... I mean, there's always... In Gen 1, there's always a chance to miss. 100% did never mean... Uh, other than Swift. Swift was guaranteed. Outside of Swift, which was the sort of the, the draw of Swift at the time, was it was a true uh, unblockable move. Everything can miss in Gen 1. There is a small, as small of a chance. There is always a chance. So even 100% accuracy moves have a chance to miss. So we start off with, of course, Copper. Two Thundershocks, boom. There goes the Staryu. We took a little bit of damage. In comes the dangerous one, the Starmie with the Bubble Beam. And it's faster than us, of course. That Water Gun, it hurt. But we can survive, I think... But I'm scared of that bubble beam. I go for it, and damn, I was reasonably scared. Because, yeah, we got this thing down to a third of its health, but that bubble beam is scary as hell, and I don't really have a great switch in. So I go into Rat again because he's got the most HP, he could probably take the most. Goes for a water gun. And this is where I go for the quick attack, trying to go for the easy quick kill. It works. I think the critical did actually matter. Uh, I think it would have been left with like, like a sliver without it. Either way, we did defeat Misty. It looked like it was handily, but it was a pretty scary moment at the time, if I recall. So we do beat Misty. We get our second gym badge. It's all good. And now we move on from there. And our next encounter is below Saffron City, and it's a Mankey, a level 10 Mankey. So we send out Rock against it. We go for the, what do we do? I'm scared to hurt it apparently, by the looks of it. We go into our Oddish, Mary Jane. Uses a scratch attack, we use Absorb. Oh. I think the damage output it was scaring me there, so I didn't want to kill the Mankey where it's so weak, like it's so, like I'm level 20, it's level 10 sort of idea. So yeah, so we use Absorb a couple of times, then we use the Pokeball, and no, no dice, no dice. Scratch attack, mm. here's where I probably jump into, yeah, Thunder Wave territory, so go Copper. And Copper is going to, of course, tank that like a beast that he is. And Thunder Waved. And now with the Thunder Wave, come on, come on, come on. Boom, baby, we got ourselves a Mankey. And you guys know how much I love Mankey. I love Primate. Probably my favorite fighting type Pokemon is probably Primate. 
If I had to, a gun to my head, if I had to pick, probably pick him. And there we go, we name him Apollo. Apollo Creed. So now we're in Diglett's Cave. Uh, we haven't raised anybody up yet by the looks of it too much. I guess we went through Vermilion and stuff, and now, okay, we get, ran into a Diglett, not a Doug Trio. We really could have used the Doug Trio, though, That's let's be real. Uh, Doug Trio would have been excellent. Uh, and, well, that doesn't matter. Okay, so, we can catch a level 19 Diglett, which would actually, level 19, we're only in our 20s. Uh, raising him up a couple levels wouldn't, wouldn't hurt. We could actually have ourselves a Doug Trio pretty easily. So what do we call a Diglett again? I think we change his name later on. We call him... Uh, Tarmiel, uh, because of the three heads and stuff like that from Seven Deadly Sins, but I think we call him the Triventil, uh, later on. And now we've done the SSN, obviously, and now we're on to our next rival battle. And, alright, let's, let's see what happens. We have no evolutions to speak of in this highlight reel, so I assume we're just doing what we do. So we meet again. Copper versus Pidgeotto. The difference is this time. Thundershock nearly kills you in one hit. And without you didn't do quick attack. See, I wasn't falling for that again. I did quick attack before. Wasn't falling for it. We're still 20 HP down. That eradicate is scary. Very scary. Yeah, we changed the name to try trium. Triumvir. Triumvir, which means something different. Holy crap, that freaking hurt. And now I'm thinking, like, do I do it? And I get the crit. Potion. That was scary as hell right there. Two critical hits because of the karate chop. It's not super effective, of course, because it's not fighting type. I could have easily died there. Mankey just coming in clutch. They're, Apollo just doing his thing. We finally go into our Charmeleon that none, nobody's seen in these highlights yet. Uh, and Caligon does an Ember attack. Which, realistically, I should have been smarter and known that I needed to just go straight for the Scratch anyways. Scratch gonna do more anyways. Yeah, like, look at how much Scratch does. Because, defensive-wise, Cadaver sucks. Special defense when it was mixed with just well, there was no special defense. It was just special So now war turtle comes out level 20. I know I can't survive a hit from this guy So what am I going into? I Decided to go into Radigan apparently and Here comes the obvious water gun Doesn't do nearly that much and boom over half here comes our Raticate in clutch. Another Hyper Fang. Boom. And there we go. Cypher is down. There goes our rival again. We are doing extremely well so far. So now we're into Vermilion City Gym. We have to battle ourselves a few trainers, a few trainers. I believe there's three in this gym plus the gym leader, so. No big deal here, no big deal to us. We got Ratigan, the killer of war turtles, is up in here. Your quick attack, pfft. take a hyper fang, you're out of here. And see, we're just gaining levels. All you're doing is making us stronger. Quick attack, no big deal. Hyper Fang, level 21 Pikachu. It's critical hit. The critical might have mattered. Pikachu might have survived it by a sliver. Either way, we defeat the Sailor. Now we fight against this guy, but we decided to switch over to Encalagon. And then we're going to fight the gentleman after that. So first we fight the rocker. The rocker wants to fight. He sends out a Voltorb. Voltorb. 
Tackle attack. It's a crit. None do very much. Dina does our ember, however, so I try for a scratch attack to see the difference. And it's really not that different, so I decide for the ember. Sonic Boom, of course, is going to do 20 damage even. We, of course, miss an ember. Once again, I told you guys, accuracy is a myth in Gen 1. Uh, 1? 1. In Gen 1, it's a myth. So we don't, we choose not to learn Rage. We've already been screeched. Unfortunately, in a way, we do get the crit on the Magnemite, but the, uh, the Ember, of course, is not super effective because Steel didn't exist back then. Though we do get the burn at this point, sort of irrelevant. It does half his attack and all that stuff, but we're gonna kill him anyway, so. Didn't really help matters much. Uh, then one more Voltorb. We can survive one Sonic Boom, so I go for the Ember. See what type of damage. Uh, a Sonic Boom, of course, is gonna hit us. It does 20 odd damage. Or 20 even, as it's supposed to. Uh, I go into... What do I choose here? I go into uh, Copper. Because I know I can take at least two more of these. Or at least one more of these. So I go for the Quick Attack. Goes for the Screech. But the Screech isn't going to matter. Because Sonic Boom isn't even 20 regardless. So I go for the Quick Attack again. Goes for a Tackle. It's a critical, but it does less than Sonic Boom, so I don't know why it would go for it. And there we go. Boom. We defeat the Rocker. So now, we're going to take Apollo to fight the Gentleman. There we go. Gentleman has a level 23 Pikachu. We have a level 23 Apollo Creed. Quick attack. Critical head. Of course you did. Of course you did. But you know what the difference is? We crit you too. And now you're gone. So boom, baby. So Apollo did manage to do one W in this gem. One W. We're good with it. So now this is where we look for our way through the trash to make sure that there was, uh, get ourselves <laughs> into the gym. We go through it. We go through it. We go through it. There's no way I highlighted all this. Come on, just, come on, come on. There's no way I kept all this. Unless I get it right here. Come on, come on. Highlight reel, it's a highlight reel, come on. Or was my whole idea to make us all suffer? We all have to suffer right now because I had to suffer. We all suffer because Everyone suffers this damn trick. It's it's beside it. It's up. It's left. You have a 50-50 shot half the time. Other times you have a uh, you have a 33% uh, chance. And there we go. We got it. We got it. All right. So yeah, we were punishing. I'm punishing you guys the same way I was always punished. The same way we were all punished. Let's go up against Lieutenant Surge. Who fought in the war. Did you hear he fought in the war? I heard he fought in the war. I don't know about you, but I know. He fought in the Pokemon War. That war that spawned 30 years worth of theories. I prescribed to the Pokemon War theory. So Triumvir, uh, which means something, I forget what it means at this point, but I did l look it up if you guys are curious. 
It means something special. Um, either way, we are gonna completely own with dig. Just dig, dig, dig. We outspeed all his Pokemon. His Pokemon can't hit us. It's kind of a joke. And at the time, right here, I'm thinking Doug Trio. Good fucking Pokemon. Good Pokemon to have. Learns Dig, Earthquake, Speedy Fucker, High Attack. So, I had no problem raising up a Diglett. And, lo and behold, after Lieutenant Surge's Gym, what happens? We defeat a Bug Catcher on the way to wherever the hell we're going. I assume Rock Tunnel, and then boom! Boom, 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 bada, boom, 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 bada, boom, 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 Super Saiyan 3! We get Triumvir becomes a Doug Trio. And Apollo also. Boom. During the Rock Tunnel extravaganza, Mankey time goes into Primeape. So Apollo became Creed. Let's go. We're just going evolution after evolution. So now Mary Jane, our Oddish, becomes Gloom. And once again, we do allow for purchasing of evolution stones. And when not possible, by the way, when not possible in-game, uh, through a Nuzlocke challenge, we evolve them at level 36. Any evolution stones or weird methods get evolved at level 36. So now we're into our rival battle. Uh, and now we have Thunderbolt, of course, on Copper. Boom! How do you like it now? Third time's a charm. Third? Three? Third? I, I combined three with third there. Um, but we completely dominated that Pidgeot at that time. One Thunderbolt. Now we also taught Pikachu Swift. And boom, we killed the Growlithe and the Pidgeotto. All right, come on, come on. Bring it, bring it. All right, we're gonna switch to Ancalagon. And here comes the Hypnosis. All right, we'll fight through the Hypnosis. Let's see what happens. Barrage, which I, I don't believe is a move anymore. I don't believe Barrage actually exists anymore. I actually think they got rid of it by Gen 3. I don't even think it existed in Gen uh, in Gen 3. So there we go. Uh, barrage, boom, boom, boom. And we're 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 just gonna we're we're gonna wait. We're gonna wait and we're gonna wake up. We are that stubborn, apparently. Man, are we stubborn in this? This guy has done half our health by doing that, and boom, we finally hit him. It only did half though, so now, oh man. <laughs> I can't imagine how pissed off I was by this point. Like, just being like, all right, all right, we're going through this, we're really doing this, why are we doing this? Go Primate. And Hypnosis did not affect him, and since Karate Chop is not a fighting move at this point. Boom! Neutral damage, critical hit, done. And here comes Kadabra. Now, Kadabra at this point probably has Psy Beam, so I believe I switch. And do I? Yeah, I do. Into Radigan. Oh, not Psy Beam, but Confusion. Which, considering it did that much with the critical to Radigan, probably the best choice. One Hyper Fang though, boom, 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 done like dinner. Then we go War Turtle. Now, we missed the first Hyper Fang. Bubble intersects, we're at 30 HP. 
a little worried here, not crazily. We go for the quick attack because I'm worried now. Bubble. Alright, one Hyper Fang. That bite's dangerous. Like, look at that. Yeah. I was playing. Yeah, I'm playing. I'm playing a hard game there. Like, that easily could have went wrong. I was playing a hard game there. I was I was playing chicken with with uh, Cypher there. I was playing chicken. And I'm not 100% sure that that was the right call. It worked out, but it doesn't mean it was the right call. Just because, that's the crazy thing. Just because things work out does never, it never means that you were right. Just because it worked doesn't mean you did the right thing. So, uh, we used the Thunderstone finally on uh, Copper. We must have learned our, the last move I cared about. And boom, now we have a Raichu, the fattest ass Raichu you ever did see. And now we're in uh, Celadon City Gym for our fourth gym badge. See, I would leave him a Pikachu. I would. But this is a Nuzlocke challenge, you know what's going to happen. So now we're going to start off with our Doug Trio Triumvir. And Triumvir is going to uh, dig his way to victory because every grass that I've been here, guess what? Other than Tangela, is poison type. So, dig. Dig, 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 Just dig your way to victory, my man. I have no issues here. Yeah, come at me. You know, see, the good thing is this is trainer experience and it's easy and it's quick and I can do it and we're also already level 30. Like, we're doing good good work. Doug Trio is, our, is a monster at this point. Like, I'm really happy I chose to raise up Doug Trio, not just for the Lieutenant Surge gym, and once again, yes, there is the there is the danger of getting something like that, the absorb. But you know, turn it back and fold by just wiping them out in the first place. So with a uh, uh, Pokemon like Doug Trio, you run the risk. Because we're up against poison types who generally have grass type moves. And or are dual type grass like we're right now in Celadon City. You do run the risk of them outspeeding you or you miss or something like that, and they end up using a razor leaf, a vine whip, a mega drain, and it and it takes you out. That that is a possibility. Uh Doug Trio's uh pros are high speed, high attack, not defense. So and, and certainly not special defense. So if you if you take it, you take it. You know. So here we go again. But think about it. We're only uh, what 40, 50 minutes into this video, and we're already halfway through the game technically. Because once we beat this gym, that's the fourth gym done. And we're winning this so easily, it's kind of sad. Like, I would commentate on how I'm butchering weeds, but, uh... You know, what Doug Trio is doing is what I'm supposed to be out there doing right now. I, I should be out there weeding the garden, sort of idea. Yeah, yeah. Just destroying weeds 110%. That's what I should be doing. See, like, look at these levels. We're all good. So we're going to take Apollo. We're going to make sure that we're sort of even keeled a little bit here. Because trainer experience is so much easier to gain a couple levels than it is to run around in the wild. All right, Apollo, show your stuff. Alright, you took a growl. That's alright. He did kill level 24 Bulbasaur. Good for you. Good for you, man. Not that much experience, though. 
Can you kill the Ivysaur though? The Ivysaur will give you like probably 700 experience if you can, do, if you can manage it. We got Leech Seated. But the Karate Chop should just make that irrelevant. What do you got? Yeah, 724. Okay. Still not enough to yeah, do much of anything. Alright, there we go. Cut. And here we go. There's two trainers left alongside this one. And then we fight Erica. Ah, just shy of it. And now we're poisoned. God damn. Poison's the problem. Poison's always the problem. So we decide to karate chop the gloom nonetheless, get the double critical hit. We do level up, but the poison of course is gonna hurt us. I believe we're hoping that we can run away before there's an issue, so. Uh, who are we switching out to? Radigan, all right. Ratigan. Right again is going to fight against a uh, cool trainer. Send out a weeping bell, level 24. Now we're uh, the weakest right now, but uh, our hyper fang is going to prove otherwise. Stun spore, of course, we did get paralyzed. Uh, we're in that trap. You can't, you can't escape that trap, so there's no point in trying. Just switch out to something else. If he stuns everybody, we're screwed. There we go. The first appearance of Copper the Raichu, and boom. See, this is the problem with the uh, this gym back in the day. Uh, if you got wrapped, you were fucked if you had a status ailment. There was status ailment, yeah. And then it wouldn't, you couldn't, it wouldn't wear off. And then they would wrap you, and then by speed, you were screwed. They fixed this later, but it was a cheap way to win. And now our resistance to grass type moves works in our favor right now. But yeah, I can't tell you how many times I actually did lose against the trainer on the left. I will never forget this the trainer on the left that has the bell, bell sprout or whatever. Um, I did lose to her with a Charmeleon, if you can believe it. Paralyzed me, whatever. And then that, that one right down there. Uh, I lost to her with a Charmeleon. And I just beside myself like it was a it was a lock you couldn't get out of it I was paralyzed and kept using rap you can't get out of the rap so and once you got out of the rap they used wrapped again and you were in an endless cycle until you died I was so mad I was so mad at the game not realizing that some game mechanics were broken, I, I just thought that, like, the game hated me, you know what I mean? Like, a classic gamer. Uh, the game hates me! That kind of idea. Um, but we easily cleared out those trainers. There was nothing really there to report. Now we're going to fight against Erica. Now, our team isn't exactly at full fighting force, but I think throwing an, an Caligon here with... Not even flamethrower, but just ember should do us plenty good. Alright. 
See, here's the problem. The difference is, is nowadays, rap doesn't do this. Uh, but it used to. And then, boom, all right, a critical hit. There we go. See, we don't have flamethrower yet, so we're not, we're not ready to really take on these tyrants. Though we did kill the Victor Bell, but we are poisoned. Now we go up against the Tengula. Constrict, which does nothing. Ember, which does almost everything. Does about 48% of the total HP. And even though we're taking poison damage, and there's a super potion there. Alright, I think we're going to switch, are we? No, we're going to take the one last hit. Nah, that was a stupid ploy. Alright, who are we switching into? Who are we going with? I'm actually curious. I don't remember. I'll be honest with you. Raticate. Radigan. All right, right again. Right again, switches out into copper. Copper takes a constrict. I guess nothing. And decides, fuck, type advantage, thunderbolt. Constrict is basically nothing. Swift. That was a critical hit. It probably mattered, honestly. Tangela is a weird sort of Pokemon like that. Now we're into Vile Plume. So now, Thunder Wave is ass, so let's see how you like it, asshole. And then, boom, a Mega Drain. Gonna do something, but not really a whole lot of anything. We're gonna try this. Swift? Oh, hell yeah. Swift is doing pretty good damage. But Mega Drain is also doing good damage. So we're gonna go with Swift again. We got a crit. Now we're in the Poison Powder territory. Another Swift. Uh, we're so close. And we got the Para. We got the Para, so it was a clean sweep right there. Erica was a little more difficult than she should have been, but probably because we fought against all those trainers beforehand, of course. Like, had we walked in there with a full team and ignored the trainers, would have been a done deal, but is what it is. We get Mega Drain TM out of it, and that's the end of that. Now we fight against Giovanni in the game corner. All right, let's go up against Giovanni here. First thing he sends out is an Onyx, but I've already fought Lavender Tower, Celadon City. Dude, you are levels behind here. Like, what are we doing here? Doug Trio, go. Level 24, Rhyhorn. What, what, what are we talking? I love your Rhyhorn, man, but dig. Dig. One hit, there goes Onyx. One hit, there goes Rhyhorn. Now you got a Kangaskhan, level 29. Impressive. Impressive. I wish I had a Kangaskhan. I nearly beat your Kangaskhan in one hit too. And all you could do was one Rage hit. Giovanni. What are you doing, man? Giovanni is not looking hot. Giovanni is not looking that hot. That's all I'm going to say. He's just not. We kicked the shit out of him. So what did you think, ladies and gentlemen? This is the first video of a long slew of videos I hope to make in the Genlock Challenge. Uh, this is only the first part, of course. I hope you guys enjoyed the color commentary going forward. Uh, is this the way you want me to do this going forward? Or would you prefer it being live stream format? Do you want me to do the entire run and with color commentary going forward? Just let me know what your opinion is down in the comment section down below. Of course, as always, it's appreciated. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. As always, it's always, once again, very much appreciated. And we'll see you beautiful people back here once again 
next time when we play some more red version for our gen log challenge. Looking forward to it. Hope you guys are too. The highlights are coming. See you back here next time. Bye-bye.